Hello, it's Monday the 5th of June. What a day, like, really, what a carnage in, um, in crypto markets. Thanks to the SEC news that they are going to charge CZ and Binance. Um, and yeah, I know that was, this was expected. It wasn't kind of, you know, crazy. Um, but the SEC charged Ripple and Ripple haven't died yet. And remember, this is just Binance USA. They, they can't shut down Binance in foreign countries. Um, they can make it very difficult. But these exchanges, you know, they're a license to print money. Um, and they will, others will come and they will take their place. As long as uh, your money is safe, that's the most important thing. What I think is, for me, is most interesting about this SEC complaint against Binance is the, is the quick restraining order that they're trying to lock up all their finances. Um, that's very unusual in this case. But, you know, the CFTC charged Binance in March and the market didn't die and Bitcoin is not going to die. And quite frankly, ETH, Ethereum is outperforming. I don't think that's going to die either. Ethereum is outperforming most altcoins. And short term anyway, it's outperforming Bitcoin. Let's, um, we will take a look at the charts and where we're likely to fall to. But I just also wanted to point out that, you know, this week we had some really interesting bullish news. Hong Kong is allowing re crypto retail trading starting on June the 1st. Hong Kong loves gambling. Not only that, but if if uh, if they do it in Hong Kong, they will, I think, eventually have a China regulated exchange for retail traders in China to trade crypto if they don't do it in um, through Hong Kong. Uh, for China, it reverses its 2021 ban on cryptocurrencies. I mean, there are pretty good rules and they are going to only allow kind of large cap coins in um, uh, Hong Kong as well. So I think half the problem, you know, with Binance was all of these shit coins. In fact, most of these exchanges, they would compete to put these shit coins on because everybody wanted to trade them and stuff. And they really failed their customers in that they really didn't do dil due diligence on them. You know, a lot of them really were just shit coins and scams. There are so many uh, scams. So anyway, the good news is that liquidity could increase. Whatever we lose in the US, we could see come back in Hong Kong and China with this decision to allow um, retail uh, crypto trading in Hong Kong. So that's uh, quite good news. And other exchanges will come and they will fill the gap. So let's talk about Bitcoin, because even if we hadn't had this noise from uh, the SEC, seasonally, Bitcoin does trend to make a high in early June and fall from there. It has a little nice bounce in July and August, and then it tends to make a bottom September, October. We've had a massive, massive rally when we look at Bitcoin this year. We look at it on the weekly and we see, you know, uh, we were, when we got up here, we were up over 100% in percentage terms. Even now, we're still up more than 50% from these lows. This is still, for me, a correction. When I look at the weekly chart here, I was expecting these this weekly 200 moving average to be support. We seem to be going... Uh, back and forward into it. But we've gotten above all of these weekly moving averages. I expect that we come back and find support from them before we continue higher. And so far, this price action for me from these highs has been choppy, overlapping and corrective. When I look at the daily chart, and I'm going to go back in time here in Bitcoin. For me, you know, the most important moving average is a 200 moving average. And whenever we get across, so for example, here in 2021, we had this lovely uptrend. We made a high in April 2021. When we got underneath this 20 and 50 moving average and they reversed, they crossed bearish. The target was always the 200 moving average. Same here. 
when we did this high in November 2021, we had a bearish cross of the 20 over the 50 moving average. We got underneath, bounced up, found resistance, and the target on the downside was the 200 moving average. This is what we tend to do here. We had a bullish cross. Our first target was back to this 200 moving average. Here, in March 2022, bullish cross, first target, back to the 200 day moving average. It really is the king of the trend. And when you smash through it, get and above it, for example, here, you look for it to be support on pullbacks. So here in February this year, bullish uh, bearish cross, we pulled back to the 200 moving average and we swung higher again. So here we're repeating this passion pattern. We had a bearish cross of these moving averages on the 9th of May. We've rallied back into them and our target on the downside is going to be this 200 day moving average. Now, sometimes you go sideways and all the time you're above a moving average, it'll come up towards you. Sometimes you drop down into it. So although I see really, really good support here in Bitcoin at 25,000, it's the neckline of this really lovely bottoming pattern. It um, really, really good, you know, round number support and resistance. So I think that this is a really good level to bounce from. But because this 200 day moving average is a little bit lower here at the 50 percent retrace of this entire rally at 23,260, I think that there is a danger that we could overshoot and we come down to 23. 260 and then I'm watching to see if we can bounce from there. So I think we need to be patient if we're waiting to buy this dip, which I am definitely. I think that, you know, next year with the halving and the seasonal sort of pattern for Bitcoin, you know, that this is going to be a really, really nice opportunity that we're going to get to buy. It's just a matter of being patient and timing it right. So good level at 25,000, but potentially 23,260. Now we could argue that this move lower here is also a descending channel. If we draw it like this, like this, you can see we've got a couple of touches on the top and this also points to a sliding down uh, lower, doesn't it? Uh, so yeah, 25,000 is a pretty good bounce level for trading against. Slightly higher, 25,097. And, but I do think that potentially we see 23,260 before we make a bottom. And to be honest, we could, if this doesn't hold or we get underneath it, we could come all the way down to this 61.8 and potentially these lows. We could argue that this was one, two, three, four, five. And if that's the case, you know, the bottom of this wave four, which is all the way down here at 20,000, could be where we end up. We should put the 786 fib in down here if that's where we come. So for now, this sounds like really bad news, doesn't it? It's pretty bad news for Binance. But, you know, they were very opaque, Binance as a company. Um, I don't know any hedge fund that could get clearance to trade on Binance because they were too opaque, you know, and the stuff that FTX was doing, like trading against its customers and stuff, I'm absolutely sure Binance were doing it as well. And there is absolutely no transparency whatsoever uh, about where the funds are secured, about audits, about uh, nothing. So... Yeah, I do see this move by the um, CFTC, though, as part of a much bigger uh, move. Again, it's all about control. And, you know, Bitcoin, remember, is all about financial freedom and lack of control. The U.S. government have been doing stuff with the U.S. dollar. Remember, the U.S. dollar is the world's reserve currency and is falling out of favour because they have been using it to sanction countries and stop them using it. And 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 that's really harmed the US dollar. And this move here with uh, cryptocurrencies and the upcoming, you know, digital dollar that they want to print, you know, the central bank digital coin um, 
is all about controlling our financial lives and the opposite of what Bitcoin was designed for in 2008. So, yeah, I don't think it's a good move and people will move offshore and other exchanges will come up. And, you know, to be honest, if they are a little bit more transparent and regulated somewhere else, I think that that wouldn't be a bad thing at all. So uh, everything is going to be all right and the future is bright for cryptocurrency. Remember, there are countries like the UK that want to be, you know, at the forefront of digital currencies and crypto uh, advancement. Uh, not everyone is behaving in the controlling way that the United States is. So uh, it's all very dystopian, you know. I remember, you know, you always say, I, you don't associate this kind of control with Democrats, but I remember after, you know, after the World Trade Center bombings and all the regulation came in and the Patriot Act and, you know, the Obama government were no better than anyone else. It, it's, governments are not, governments really want too much control of our money. That's the biggest problem. So, Bitcoin, it is in a bigger pullback, but the future is bright. Don't be too depressed. The only thing I would say is learn to trade when we get bearish reversals like we had here. You know, sell, learn when to buy it back later and uh, you will make money. And if you can learn to do that now in this troubled times, when the really, really good moves come, I think later in the year or next year, uh, will be really well positioned to change your financial future, you know, make it better. Okay, so short term, I do think we sell rallies in Bitcoin, it's got further to fall and 25,000. The other thing, if we go down to a four hour chart here, um, potentially, I think this is, was a wave one because I can count five ways down here and then we have this bounce. And so potentially uh, we've started a bigger swing higher here. Um, and so one, two, this is wave three. We're gonna see a wave four. So we're gonna see a correction on the scale that we had here from last uh, sort of uh, Thursday until Sunday, Monday. So this three, four day uh, bounce. And then I do think we will continue uh, lower in Bitcoin before we make a bottom. We were to make a wave four here but ahead of this uh, 25,000. That would make a bounce here more likely. Um, if you're trading short term, you know, just remember what the bigger trend is shorter term. The bigger trend is down. Um, and so uh, don't expect bounces to be bottoms. That's all trade level to level. One surprise for me lately has been how Ethereum has really, really been outperforming and pretty strong against Bitcoin today. In fact, this is a weekly chart of ETH against Bitcoin and you can see ETH against Bitcoin for the last, gosh, you know, six weeks in a row. Really nice rally. And this is also another swing. Now, technically, I suppose we would have to say that this is sideways in ETH Bitcoin. What's amazing to me, though, if you go to uh, CoinGecko or if you go to any of, uh, um, for example, if you, uh, I really like Finviz, um, if you take a look uh, long term, how ETH has been outperforming most uh, altcoins is really uh, very, very pleasing. So I think with, you know, uh, this move here, potentially, We've got a big 50% level. This is ETH Bitcoin uh, measured a bit stamp. It's been around for a long time. It's a pretty uh, long term exchange. And you can see that we are going sideways. We're doing that golden ratio thing. So if I put my fibs on from this high to low, we rallied up to the 61.8. We went down to the 38.2. We went up to the 61.8 again. And normally when you do this, this 50% level in the middle becomes a little bit of a pivot level underneath it going lower you're looking for the obviously 38.2 above it we're going to be looking so I think if we can hold above you see when we rallied up to it before uh, at the beginning of April on the weekly we couldn't close above this 50% level 
um, and in fact reversed and went down again. If we can hold above this and hold above this weekly 50 moving average this week, I think potentially we're headed back up to the top of the range uh, after a very nice three wave uh, correction lower here in ETH Bitcoin. And if I measure these swings, if I measure this high to the slow and I project it from here, you know, it does look like a pretty nice ABC. It's not quite an equal measured move. Um, but it's holding this 61.8 nicely, and I think holding above this middle pivot level does point to a bigger move higher. The trend line trader is going to be looking at it like this and going, oh, look, this is this a breakout? Um, even if I put it on this widest setting here, potentially we are going to see a little bit of a breakout. For now, though, we need to make a new high because at the moment, you know, we haven't reversed the downtrend this high and then this high. And so I'm going to go level to level. I'm not actually trading ETH against Bitcoin, but it's holding its own. Let's put it that way. It's uh, it's not headed lower. One chart I do have to talk about is Coinbase. Now, I was looking, this news for the uh, for Binance is pretty bad news for uh, Coinbase. I don't know what Coinbase have been doing to keep the SEC happy, but you've got to think that Coinbase must be in their headlights. Do I think that Binance is a much worse actor? Of course I do. Um, and Coinbase have tried really hard to get, uh, to make the SEC happy and get regulated. Now, I was looking at this as a potential breakout. I'm going to take, tidy up my chart and we'll start again here. So I was looking at this sideways consolidation, first swing higher, nice choppy overlapping three wave sideways consolidation. I saw a breakout higher here. The problem is that our move higher hit our first resistance. Technically, this is a messy 61.8, isn't it? And this 38.2, um, let's take a look. So if I measure from this low to this high, We reached the, you know, very often in corrections, you look for equal measured moves or 1272 or 1 1.618 of the first swing. And in a bearish correction where you very often see the C leg or the third leg, only 61.8 of the first leg. And that's what happened here. And that's where we reversed in Coinbase. Back underneath these moving averages today, unfortunately, would say that this whole rally was corrective and we are still headed lower. If I look big swing here on this daily, I go from low to high. We bounce from the 61.8 big rally. Normally when you do that, the 786 flip becomes a pretty nice bullish Gartley. So that also would give us a target down here around 43 for Coinbase. We would look for a bottom there. Potentially, we've gone one, two, three, and this is just a wave, a choppy overlapping wave four. It is all still a correction, but if we make new lows here, I think that we risk continuing lower uh, down to 43 and underneath, get all getting stuck underneath and holding underneath this 61.8 level uh, would confirm that. So Coinbase, not the bullish breakout that I was looking for, pretty nasty pullback. Everyone's gonna be waiting now and seeing what the SEC announced against uh, Coinbase. Yeah, a bit unfortunate that. I mean, we're holding these lows, but for now, I suppose we could try again. If this was just a shakeout, we really would need to hold, be holding above this 50% uh, level and it's too early uh, to see now. For now I think that that could be resistance and we you know continue lower in Coinbase. Not the bullish setup we thought back to sideways consolidation and we're all going to wait now and see what the SEC do in uh, that one. Okay for most altcoins then while we're in this correction most altcoins are getting absolutely clobbered it's not a good time for any of them. Um, I'm not, uh, I, I'm just going to take a, 
a look at some of them. So Litecoin has a halving coming up. I'm just going to go for now. Litecoin has so far managed to hold support today from this 200 moving average. We're in a pretty tight wedge consolidation. Um, I would not like to see the lower half. You know, you can draw corrections sideways like this as triangles, but sometimes when they break down, they end up being channels and you see this swing and this swing being equal. So if I measure this first swing lower and we look at where that 61.8 is here, it means that it's really important support that this 61.8 level in Litecoin at 78.50 and underneath 78.50, this is likely to drop to 63.12 because we're like, I don't know, 70 days out from uh, Litecoin halving. I think this could potentially be a pretty nice buying opportunity. Uh, that's what I'm watching for. For now, we're just sideways. And I always say, don't diddle in the middle. We haven't even broken the daily 200 moving average so not you know these older blue chip clearly not security been around for a long time not a shit coin coins you know shouldn't be the end of the world for them and uh so we'll see how we go okay i will uh be back tomorrow we will start again and i will look at any other stocks and any other markets you want. I do want to say about stock indexes. This is a S&P 20 year seasonality chart. And, you know, obviously for 20 years, we've been a really nice bull market. You can see that June, like May, is not always a very good month. In fact, it's a pullback month. Everybody says sell in May and go away. Um, actually, if you buy in May or buy in June, it's a pretty nice trade in these stock indexes. Obviously, last year was a bit of an outlier. So I do expect at some point a little bit of a pullback this month. Do I think it's going to end up being a bigger, you know, top? No, not necessarily yet. I just think it's going to be a pullback month. Um, there's a lot going on. I think if we do get a turning point this month, in stock indexes or we head higher again it's going to be around the fed meeting which of course is next week this week you know obviously we've got crypto news and stuff going on but next week we have us inflation data cpi ppi and then we have the fed midweek so next week is going to be the really uh interesting week the fed promised or, or, or suggested pretty clearly that they are going to pause they didn't say pivot they said pause so how they guide after next month, I don't think they should have done that, to be quite honest. I think they should have at least waited for the jobs data, which came in really strongly. Um, but they have, they've kind of committed and the Fed, unlike other central banks, don't like surprising the market. So if they've made it this explicit that they're, that they're going to pause, I think they probably will pause. But if inflation is still really hot, they're going to have to guide that going forward, there will be more hikes. Market, you know, we should still see one more hike um, based on their guidance. So we'll see how we go. But that's all going to happen uh, next week. OK, good luck. Please don't be too uh, downhearted. Um, this is just American regulation, but the future is still